Jake the Film Guy, microbudgeter.com. I am the best video producer this side of the Mississippi. Today we're gonna paint a happy little tree. Actually, we're gonna continue in the series of interview questions that you should be asking a W-2 employer. Mm -hmm. Lots of resources below or in previous videos if you haven't gone through the homework or the first round interview questions. For today, we're gonna talk about the second round interview and what you should be asking your future employer. There's a bird in First up, you should be talking about salary at the end of the first interview. That's right. I don't care who it is you're interviewing with. HR representative, customer service representative, sales associate, your boss, the CEO. Maybe it's all one and the same person. At the end of that first interview, talk about salary. Don't know how to do that? Head on over to the site. I've got a resource for you. Salary questions that you must wade through at the end of that first conversation because you don't want to waste their time and you don't want to waste their time. And that's exactly how you're going to phrase it. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So dot, dot, dot. Now, we've gotten that out of the way. You're in the second round of interviewing. If you were talking to the same person as before, these are the questions that you want to ask them. If you have been shuffled and moved to someone else to interview with them, then I would go back to the first video slash blog post and ask them the first round of questions. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. You might as well get multiple inputs from the multiple people you'll probably interview with, especially in today's landscape. I would say it's pretty rare that you're only interviewing with one person these days. You're probably gonna be interviewed by several people, sometimes more than one person at a time. So be prepared for it. And when you do get to that second interview with that same person from the last interview, here are some additional questions to show you've done your homework, you care about their company, and more importantly, you're gonna be the one to solve the problems for which they have created this job for. For example, I would ask them a question like, do you like working here? Secondly, I would ask them a question like this. If you were to fill in this sentence, if you were to fill in the blank, whatever you do, do, then how would you fill in that blank? As with the last video, you can head on over to the website and when you sign up to join the Bold Nation newsletter, you'll get instant access to all of the questions that you should be asking your future boss in that second interview. Side note, if you have had a first interview with Bob and then Susie comes along, you can go ahead and ask Susie the same set of questions you asked Bob. It's good to get multiple inputs from the multiple people you'll surely interview with at this company XYZ. Savvy? Now, there are a couple of things that I have to spell out. I shouldn't have to, but for my generation and for my son's generation that's coming up, this is something that is worth repeating. First of all, always wear a suit. I don't care if everyone in the office wears jerseys every single day of the week. Wear a suit. You can always overdress for an interview. If you underdress, that communicates that you just don't care. Are you gonna get hired looking like that? Maybe at Mickey D's, but you're going in as a video producer, somebody that's gonna solve problems, tell stories that's gonna change the face of that organization. You're a historian, you're an adventurer, you're a rebel. You're gonna be on the front lines of communication, so you better look like it, wear that suit, even if the day-to-day -day is just jeans and a t-shirt. I have to add to this, I once came to a group interview, it was one of many interviews in a long process. There were many of us in this room gathered around waiting to advance to the next round. And all of us were wearing business casual, if not suits, as instructed. As if it had to be instructed. Sure enough, three people, three youngsters showed up in gym clothes and the entire group got a good chewing out for the next 10 minutes. In the military, if one person messed up, the entire team messed up. And they were gonna bear that mentality in their workforce as they should. Nonetheless, the illustration here is still relevant to you in your pursuit of a video production job. Wear a suit. A couple other housekeeping items. If you're gonna be doing your second interview or even your first interview via some kind of video teleconference like Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook, doesn't matter, you need to be in a well-lit area. Wear your suit. Even if you're in your home office, wear your suit. Be where there's plenty of lights, that you're not in the dark, that you are not in a place where the background behind you is overexposed and you are underexposed. You're going out for video production. These little things matter more than if you were just interviewing to be an accountant down at the Acme Company or Uncle Bob's Auto Shop. 
Next, I would actually recommend that you find a steady place to keep your camera. I, I shouldn't even have to spell this out. Come on, guys. Don't hold the phone doing your Skype or FaceTime interview. Put it in a place where it's gonna be static, where it's gonna be stationary. Again, you're trying out for video production. Start looking the part early on. In addition to wearing a suit, just look sharp. If your beard's unkempt like mine, make sure you trim it up before the interview. Don't wake up and then go do the interview with bedhead. Be your best version of yourself that you possibly can. Last but not least, be patient. Interviews these days can last several months. You need to be in it for the long haul. If you really wanna work for that company, then you're not gonna run out the door. You're gonna be patient, you're gonna jump through the hoops. Good companies, good nonprofits, so on and so forth, they all wanna hire slow and fire fast. Whether they do it in reality is another story, but that's what they're striving towards. So bear that in mind and just go with the flow. A lot of the interview questions for this second round interview, I have learned from Patrick Lencioni, great author. Check them out again at the website. He's fantastic. Check out his books on Amazon or your local library. And last but not least, speaking of great authors, Uncle G Grant Cardone. He loves this question. When he's done with the sales presentation, you are selling yourself for a company who needs to solve a set of problems that can be accomplished via video. So it might behoove you in the first, and if not the first, you better do it in the second interview. You need to conclude your interview with something along the lines of the Uncle G classic, how much of I told you do you believe? You can frame it any way you want. Hey, what percent of what I've told you do you actually believe? What? What do you mean by that question? Well, I just wanna make sure that there are no misunderstandings and that all of my qualifications are crystal clear. If you have any hesitations, any reservations about me filling this role, I'd love to know them. How much of what I've said do you believe? What percent of what I've said to you today do you believe? Frame it however you like, but you want to ask this. It's a qualifying question because if they're going to laugh and say, ah, I only, I believe about a quarter of what you said. Well, then you didn't sell them and it gives you an opportunity to go back and make amends. As always, head on over to the site, subscribe to the newsletter. I haven't pitched that enough. Subscribe to the newsletter, grab a friend, have them subscribe to the newsletter too. The content is for micro budget filmmakers. As I continue in this journey of learning how to develop a TV show, I'm gonna teach you everything good, bad, and ugly along the way, and all the video production skills that I've learned, good, bad, and ugly along the way as well. We should be dabbling in video production, live broadcast. We should even learn some stage handing until we make it as a director in the TV or film world, or with a church or a nonprofit or a business. Whatever the case may be, wherever you're gonna land as a filmmaker telling stories of hope, stories of life change, well, you need to be working on all these skill sets that you can bring to a potential employer. Are you with me? Now, I want you to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on the notifications, that'd be cool too, and share this video with one other person that needs to know what they need to know when they go out for that next video job. Until next time, God bless you. Keep creating with the king.